So uh, next up we speak to uh, one of the members of the Predators, Ricky Twell, who's had a, a brilliant year as always here at the Norfolk Arena. Classic car night tonight, Ricky, and you brought something uh, very special. Yeah, yeah, 1953 Hummer Hawk. One Never, lap wonder. <laughs> one lap wonder. Is it a bit tender, you think? Only the passenger side. The driver's side's mint, but the B pillar rotted, rotted off the passenger side, so it's been hard work getting it ready, but it looks nice now, so. Yeah, is it taking you a long while? A month. Just, just a month to get it ready? Yeah, a month. It's been in the shed a month. I've been building my others outside. Been spending like two nights on the other cars that I've been racing and the rest of the time on this. So, and uh, underneath the bonnet, how about a lot of work there? Not really. It was original engine. Uh, it didn't run very well when we got it, but my dad had a tinker about of it and it runs right now, so leave it original. Thought it'd be better. So, you're just going to plod around tonight and just see what happens up for the crash, eye Because it's a big crowd tonight. All the kids come on the, the Halloween night and want to put on a show. Yeah, the first thing I see, I'm in. <laughs> Right, so we're uh, looking to uh, get some points on the uh, Entertainers League uh, tonight, and uh, well, you, you, you're up there in the in the in the top ten anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing all right. So, uh, well, it's a fantastic car, Ricky. If it goes as well as it looks, you're going to have a good night, and uh, fingers crossed, we we'll get a few laps out of it. Yeah, a couple will do. So, uh, best of luck. Yeah, cheers. So next up, we speak to a man who always enjoys racing a Triumph here at the uh, the Halloween night. Nick Houghton 293, another stunning car, Nick. Yeah, it looks well, doesn't she? Yeah, I've had it quite a while. She'll have to have it tonight, though. Yeah. Is it a former road car? No, this one was the spares for all the road cars I had. <laughs> so, yeah, it's slowly come down to this, and she's out there tonight. Yeah, it's uh, always a big crowd for the Halloween night, and lots of kids here in a fancy dress, and I suppose you just want to go out there and entertain tonight, don't you? Yeah, it's all about fun tonight. It's keep a big smile on my face and just get stuck in and enjoy it. Yeah, it's a fantastic car's about as well. It's, it, I mean, where do people keep finding these classics from? I don't know myself. You don't see them on the road these days. You just, they do come up, but you have to pay strong money for them now, which is a bad thing, but... Yeah, and have to persevere with them, and a, a lot of MIG wire, I think, on one or two occasions. Yeah, a fair bit of body filler and a bit of <laughs> paper here and there. <laughs> just to keep the things going. Well, great to see you here again tonight, Nick, on Classic Car Night, and we wish you the best of luck. Yeah, I'll be out there giving me best. So next up we speak to uh, Justin Nichols Fiasco, as he's known, who's had a great year here at uh, Kings Lynn. And uh, for Classic Car Night, Justin, you brought something very special. Yeah, Mazda 616. Picked it up Monday. I've known about it for about a month, but trying to get it off him and that. It come off Matt Whitaker, 67, and he said oh, he promised me I could have it. So picked up Monday, easy build, a bit tender. but So 616, so that, that is very rare. Not an 818 or a 626, 616. Right, so you believe this is the first one ever raced? Yeah. As far as we know. Yeah, and uh, somebody who does know the stuff on Banger Racing has told you that. So, looking to score some good points tonight for the Entertainers League, then, because you've been up there or thereabouts all year? Yeah, we was doing all right, and then like, when we got hurt, it sort of slew us down a bit, but we'll be all right. It's always next year, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, there's still some good prize money on the places anyway, so you're going to get something for your troubles. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, on the whole, though, really enjoyed it this year? Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to next year, really. Yeah, and uh, one or two interesting things in the part line for next year, have you? Yeah, get this year out of the way first. Got firecracking next week and that to deal with first, then we'll see. Yeah, so well, it's always great to see you here. I know you put a great deal into your racing this year, Justin. We wish you the best of luck out there tonight. No problem, thank you. So, next up we speak to uh, David Gibson, fresh from uh, the Junior Rod Formula, who's had a dabble in the TSR bangers, but uh, tonight, David, your first time in the full contact? Yes, first time, looking forward to it. And uh, a very nicely prepared A60 thrown in as well, so uh, Dad's raced one or two of these over the years, I take it? Yeah, he's raced quite a few, I've got to contend with him like, but yeah, it's took hours to build. Yeah, a lot, a lot of time and effort, but uh, really looking forward to it. Is it bangers that you really want to do all the time now? Well, yeah, a lot of crashing part, yeah. <laughs> no, you got, you got, that's what it's about tonight, it's all about crashing and putting on a good show for the crowd. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just crashing. <laughs> really enjoy it. So, great to see you here, David, and uh, on your maiden voyage in the bangers, we wish you the best of luck. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> So next up we speak to uh, the old war horse himself, Buffalo Bill Store 323, back in a Triumph 2000 Billy, just like uh, back in the Boston days. Yes, yes. Tracks about, the pitch about the same as Boston as well. <laughs> yeah, we're really looking forward to it tonight, because you, you do lots of racing now in the uh, in the TSR bangers, but uh, back to the full contact tonight, but it's racing against the Triumphs and the A6s, it's what you was brought up with. Yes, that's right. I'm lo I've been looking forward to this more than I have in the other bangers, to be honest, all, all year. I've been, yeah. I've been waiting for this, and thanks to Gary and Trace for helping me to do it. 
Yeah, a lot of work behind the behind the scenes. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of work, a lot of welding and everything, which is a bit rotten as usual. <laughs> yeah, but it, it couldn't be a Billy Store Triumph without uh, holes in the floor, could it? No, that's right. He's got no floors in this one. <laughs> but I noticed you've uh, resurrected the old paint scheme and the cone on the top, just how it used to be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes, yeah, 1984 World Final car for Skeg, I think it was this paint job. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, yeah it's, uh, it's what it's all about. So lots and lots of great cars here, Billy. So uh, no doubt you're looking forward to it, and we wish you the best of luck. Yes, I'm looking forward to it, but I don't know how to get on. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. It's been a back-wheel drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we're looking forward to it, and uh, there's one or two people, banger enthusiasts, that uh, perhaps didn't see you up at Boston and said, oh, even Billy's here in a Triumph. So uh, you're making the uh, the banger racing news anyway. Oh, right, that's good anyway, isn't it? Yeah, uh, just enjoy it anyway. So uh, yeah. well, everybody else enjoys it, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, so we wish you the best of luck. Great to see you, Billy. Yeah, thank you. So first up tonight uh, we see the uh, 2006 Brisker Formula 1 stock car world champion Andy Smith and uh, as is tradition now at the uh, Halloween Carnival night the world champion there greeting all the uh, the spectators as they come into the stadium and signing the posters and uh, Andy is always uh, coming over very very well with all the children and all the fans of Brisker Formula 1 stock car racing so uh, we'll just grab a quick word with Andy while, the, while he's busy doing the autographs. Andy, Halloween Carnival night now tradition here at King's Lynn and uh, tonight you're just doing your little bit with all the children as they're coming up and getting their posters. That's right, yeah, there's a few adults all that want them as well, a few big kids, but yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good night, the kids love it and the parents love seeing the kids out there on the track with the fancy dress and it makes for a good night, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's uh, that's an important thing tonight for Formula 1 stock car racing because there's so many new people come tonight who perhaps only come once or twice a year, it's a different night with the fireworks, it attracts those new people, so it's important you guys out there put on a good show tonight. That's right. I mean, Paul's Paul's realised it's a it's a good crowd puller, isn't it? Although it only be once a year, like. But um, yeah, it's it, you need other things to get the people in nowadays. Just purely advertising the stock car sometimes isn't enough for the um, sorry for the diehards, the enthusiasts, but the general spectators. You know, if you can get them in anywhere, as long as when you get them in the stadium, you show them some good racing. The track's always prepared to perfection. So hopefully tonight, you know, it'll show Formula Ones how it should be around here, which is good, fast, hard shell racing at its best. Yeah, and the uh, an extra sponsorship the uh, He Who Dares Leeds final to go for as well, so it's going to be an interesting night. It is, yeah, that first race, I mean, it, that, that, that's going to be really exciting because everybody's going to be fighting to lead a few laps, aren't they, for the extra bonus money, so gives a chance for the lower graders to have a few laps in the lead and, and then hopefully, you know, the star men, especially, well, hopefully I can get through at the end, but I think you'll find that even the ones at the back, the superstars, will be charging hard to try and get a bit of that lap money in, so should be a good way to start the meeting. Yep, so uh, your reign as world champion a couple of months old now, and, uh, well, we've got to look forward to next year now. This one is, uh, is the final meeting. In, uh, bar one of the season here at Kings Lynn. So uh, next year, the World Championship here for the f very first time. And uh, what's the feeling amongst the drivers? I think from a pure driver's point of view, it's, everybody feels good about it because the other side of that plate there, you can't beat it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, as far as the racing strip and the preparation and the way that the staff here understand stock car racing and understand the things that need to be done, etc., etc., second to none in the country. So it's going to be good. Facilities, infrastructure, there's a bit of a question mark. If people are honest, they have to say, you know, can Paul pull it out the bag on the night as regards, you know, putting up, you know, um, having a big capacity crowd, you know, more than he's probably ever had ever here. So as long as he puts the right things in place and, you know, and makes sure the spectators get looked after and they've got a bit of room to move around and what have you. I mean, I'm sure Paul's got big plans. I mean, he's, he hasn't took the easy option of taking it to a big venue, which a, a lot of smaller staging promoters do. Uh, have done recently, he's, he's thought no, he wants to go for it and run it at his own venue, which, bold move, like I say, he's got the track, gets everything else right, it'll be a fantastic night. Yeah, I suppose it's the same question you was asking when we heard that the World Final was going to be at Northampton last year. That's right, I mean really, Northampton, a few people anyway, was, was, was sceptical about the, um, the size of the place, and it, it turned out to be okay. I don't think it was fantastic, but it wasn't a fantastic stock car race, the World Final, sometimes they're not, you see, but um, you can't beat shale racing, so the pros outweigh the cons because on the other side of the fence you've got the best shale strip in the country, so you know, it, it, that's where stock car racing should be in my opinion, on shale, it's, it, it's always been a, shown to its best on shale. Time that's good, it's okay, but a shale world final, you can't, you can't pass it up really, I'm, I'm really glad it's going to be here. Yeah, well, we'll look forward to that, Andy. Well, we mustn't keep these people waiting. You enjoy the night, and uh, hopefully you, you enjoy doing your bit with the kids. Yeah, certainly will. Thank you.
So uh, next up we speak to uh, Tom Harris in the uh, 84 car, who always goes well here at uh, Kings Lynn. Tom, looking forward to it tonight? Yeah, it should be good. Hopefully it's a bit drier than Monday night at Sheffield. That's a bit wet there, so hopefully it'll be dry. Yeah, big crowd tonight with the, the Halloween Carnival night and all the fun and games with that, with the kids in the fancy dress. So it's important for Formula 1s that they're putting a good show. Yeah, it's got to be important for the crowd to get spectators to the meeting. It's all good. And last year, the, this meeting was really good. Lots of lots of people here, lots of kids having a good time. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and uh, everybody gearing up for next year. It's uh, the big one, the one we've always wanted here at Kingsley in the World Final. So what's your thoughts on that? I think it'll be a really good race. The only thing that concerns me is the marketers on the infield. But hopefully, we had a good meeting here last meeting when they moved them back a bit. And that sorted it all. So I think it would be a really good race around here because it's really fast here. Good racing all the time. Just what it needs. Yeah, and uh, well, sharing the, the bill tonight, we've got the classic car bangers. And uh, bangers is a thing that uh, that you and your dad uh, dabble in from time to time. Just as a bit of fun, really, to fill the gap between the four and the ones. But uh, the grapevine tells me the icebreaker in February here. And uh, we could expect uh, one, possibly two teams with the, the Harris father and son duo uh, involved in it. Yeah, it's got to have a crash, isn't it? Got to have a crash and a laugh. So uh, a couple of teams based around Formula 1 people? Yeah, hopefully we should have two teams here for the icebreaker with mainly Formula 1 drivers in. Well, it's going to be called the F11 a bit, but I'm not so sure about that now. So do you think you're going to be marked men then when uh, the, all these uh, banger drivers want to think, oh, teach them boys a lesson? Yeah, that's it. Nutty Nigel especially, I owe him. You owe him. There you go. Him. An exclusive Rimbat video. He's, he's chalked up uh, Nutty Nigel's numbers. So we look forward to that, Tom. And, uh, well, it's back to tonight, and uh, we wish you the best of luck for tonight. Thank you very much. So uh, next up, we speak to a man uh, showing real good form for the, uh, the well, the second half of the season, really, Lee Robinson in the 107 car. And it doesn't matter where you race, whether it's Shale or Tarmac, Lee, you seem to be there or thereabouts. Yeah, it's going really well just lately. Like I say, second half of the season's really picked up. I've kept the red top. So uh, that's where you want to be, but yeah, there must be a lot of work involved to change from shale to tarmac with just the one car. Uh, yeah, you get used to it, to be honest with you. you. You can do it in the night, but it's when you get damage as well and you got to change it over and then it starts to get hard work. Yeah, so uh, a lot of work involved, but have you got a preference shale or tarmac? It just seems to go so well on both at the moment. No, it changes week to week. Yeah, just if you're winning there, you like that track. That's simple as that. You got it. Yeah, so uh, looking forward to next year. Um, it's what everybody's talking about, the world final coming to Kings Lynn for the first time. And uh, your thoughts on it? Yeah, really nice track. Not one of my favourites, but yeah, they, they look after the track, so it should be good. Yeah, and uh, it's always some great racing. And tonight, there's uh, a lot of people coming for the first time tonight. It's Halloween Carnival night. The kids come in the fancy dress, and there's the fireworks and everything else. But it does attract a lot of new people, so it's important for Formula 1 to put on a good show. Yeah, that's right. If put on a good show, they might come back next year. That's what it's always always about, in attracting new blood into the sport. That's it. Yeah. Well, best of luck, Lee. Nice to see you here tonight, and we'll see you if the form continues. Thank you. So next up we uh, speak to the man in the 97 car, Murray Harrison, and uh, another busy night for Kings Lynn, Murray. Yeah, yeah, it should be a busy one tonight. Um, hopefully the weather's going to hold out now, so the track should be sort of well damp underneath, but once it gets the top layer off, it should be good. Yeah, and uh, a lot of first-time people come in tonight. It's a Halloween carnival night, all the kids in the fancy dress and the fireworks everything, so looking to put on a good show. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's good for us to be able to sort of look, display the sport in front of new people all the time, like, so, I mean, any sort of different little ploy to get people through the gate, you know, is good. Yeah, and uh, you've had a busy year this year, two cars on the go, and uh, it's been a busy one for you. Enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been really good. Like, I mean, with what we got on, we've had a bit of a bit of a slow start to the year, but things have started to come right towards the end as we've gone along. So, just sort of trying to build on it really for next year now. Yeah, and uh, you're going to have a busy year next year because there's uh, going to be uh, other members of the Harrison family uh, taking to the track or here. Well, yes, yeah, young Ryan's uh, finishing his minis. He'll race here next. Next Kingsley here will race here for the last time in a mini. Um, then um, my, my eldest son, they're both going to share a car for a start. So we shall have them both out next year, having a bit of a go. Plus, they're going to be running Gary again next year as well. So it's going to be a busy year for us. Yeah, and you're still going to find time to race yourself? <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully. Like, I mean, hopefully we can still do our little bit, like, and uh, they'll start to learn, learn, learn the craft, and uh, we'll see, you know. Yeah, and uh, next year the World Final comes here for the first ever time. This is a track I think you've always enjoyed, so uh, you must be full of enthusiasm for that. Yeah, it's good, like, you know, I mean, we've sort of tried to sort of get these early qualifiers out of the way and try and keep a shelf in with the shelf, sort of with them, so we're holding up there at the moment, so if we can sort of get ourselves in a reasonable position, like, yeah, we're looking forward to it, like, you know, I love the track, so. Yeah, well, we'll look forward to that, but uh, back to tonight, and like you say, hopefully the weather will stay on the side, and uh, wish you the best luck out there, Murray. Lovely, thank you.